Welcome everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us for our Unleash special service dog training event in honor of our Unleash Your Love virtual giving event that's happening now through May 6th. Uh, this uh, service dog training event is sponsored by one of our event sponsors, which is uh, Pacific, Source, Pacific Source Health Plans. Um, and so we're very grateful for their support for this event and Unleash Your Love and ultimately the summit mission of creating life-changing partnerships. So we're super excited today to dive into some service dog training with uh, two of our dogs, which you can see they're resting up right now. <laughs> and of course, our service, our, our staff trainer, Lindy. Um, so I'll, in just a few moments, I'll be passing things on to Lindy um, and then she'll be doing some training with the dogs and then we'll allow about uh, some time at the end for a Q&A. So if you would like to ask a question in the Q&A, uh, look at the bottom of the Zoom screen bar, basically. <laughs> and um, you can, if you put your mouse over uh, the bottom of the Zoom screen, you'll see something that says Q&A, and you can click on that and submit your question. So feel free to submit questions during the event, and um, I'll, we'll try to get to them depending on how I, the flow is going with the training. And if not, um, we'll answer your question at the end. So um, yeah, uh, in the chat, I have the link to the uh, Summit Assistance Dogs Unleash Your Love Virtual Giving Event campaign page if you'd like to visit it. Um, during the event or after where you can learn more about our upcoming events um, and see some other summit stories that we have featured, donate, um, whatever you would like to do and uh, fulfilling your curiosities about it. So, uh, Lindy, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and get started with the training? Yeah. So, hello. Thanks um, for attending, everybody. And um, I was telling Emma, I love being sandwiched in between my two lovely <laughs> summit dogs in training currently. Um, so I'm excited to introduce them here. We have um, Juniper <laughs> boop, and Hamon over here, and they're from our J litter. So they're about two years old and you'll get to see each of them work a little bit um, in doing um, a training session. So I hope to show you guys a little bit about how we train at Summit and um, how we get the behaviors we get. Some of them not being so flashy, um, but very important still in their success. So um, I'm just going to teach you a little bit about um, kind of my path I took and then also um, what you're going to be seeing as far as um, service dog training goes, because I don't want you in the dark. I'll say things that you might be like, well, how did, what does that mean when she says that to a dog or whatever? Okay, so service dog training, potentially the best job in the world. <laughs> so it's, it's very satisfying um, and lots of fun. And um, so, oh, I, sometimes you feel like um, the dog is training you. <laughs> and so I don't know the, it's just kind of a fun picture. This is one of our graduated dogs, Theo. He is holding a ice cream cone and man, I sure want some of that. Um, so, you know, I have really excellent coworkers when they're willing to share their ice cream. And, uh, even though my fur friends, my fur coworkers, okay. So I'm just going to say, um, hopefully there's some young people out there um, watching and wondering how they too could be a service dog trainer because it is such a um, gratifying job to have. And sometimes I wouldn't even think of it as a job. It's so fun. Um, just here's my path. It's not the path anybody else has to take. Um, I just kind of happened into it because I was very interested in animal training and animal behavior. So I have a Bachelor of Science in Organismal Biology with an emphasis in animal behavior. I just took extra classes um, that had to deal with animal behavior and animal sciences in school. I did a one year um, 
training internship in marine animal husbandry and training. And a lot of animal training is also husbandry, which means taking care of all the animals. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> so the bigger the animal, the more food they have to eat um, and the more storage it takes. So um, anyways, that it, it was fun working with marine animals. However, you can hug them, but you still don't feel like that sense of connection like you do with dogs. There's such a great sense of connection with dogs um, that you just can't get maybe anywhere else. Um, maybe cats. I don't know. <laughs> um, I also was a float person at a vet clinic. So that means I kind of bounced around and helped where needed. So I help, helped with some vet teching. I helped clean kennels. I worked in the lab for a while. Uh, looking under the microscope at fecal samples and all sorts of fun things. So um, talking to lots of people and the clients at the clinic. And then I decided I really wanted to get into dog training and help people teach their dogs. And in 2010, I got certified in canine studies through the Northwest School of Canine Studies, which is in our area. And just that helped me learn more about dog behavior in general. and um, and added on to the training I had learned. So the great thing is that what I had learned with training marine animals, not just mammals, but we did fish and turtles and stingrays and dolphins. So all everything I learned with them is applied to dogs too. So, and that was called positive reinforcement training. And so that, that bled really nicely right into um, teaching dogs and people. And then I became a volunteer as a summit instructor for our volunteer puppy raiser program and did that and still do and very much enjoy meeting all of our volunteers and um, helpful people that raise our puppies. So there we go. Okay, so now I have to teach you a little bit <laughs> about dog training so you can uh, be able to better understand and get the most out of what you're going to see today, I'm hoping. So dog training, how do dogs learn? They learn exactly the same way people learn. So through associations and also through consequences. So association, the good, the bad, and of course, um, just neutral things. So um, Delilah here is my newest addition, my personal dog. And um, her association with the bathtub miraculously was really, really good. So I went into the bathroom and Delilah happened to follow me and she hopped right into the bathtub and she wagged her tail. <laughs> so that's she, that happy body language told me, okay, this dog, um, she's a newly adopted dog and she must have really good associations with the bathtub to just offer that behavior and look happy about going into it. So I would say I pretty much lucked out with that one. Um, so she has good associations and associations are more like what a dog's feeling. Um, it's not always in, under their control. So for instance, like Pavlov, you could ring the bell and the dog would salivate. It's the same type of thing. We try, um, to teach puppy raisers how to raise our pups, um, to build good associations with all the stimuli around them, or at least neutral stimulus, um, neutral associations with things. So for instance, like when um, everybody's on a walk or whatever, and or you're walking your dog and they see another dog, we want that dog to be a neutral stimuli. We don't want it to be something that the dog gets worked up about. Um, and so there's good associations, there's bad associations with things, and there's neutral ones. So um, we just work with the dog in front of us and what we, what we see, and we start learning what that dog associates as good, bad, and neutral. And then we have consequences. So dogs learn via consequences, just like people. You know, you get in trouble if you do something bad. And if you do something good, hopefully you get rewarded for it. So that's just like in our dog training, we like to stay in the reinforcement realm. Um, and that means we like to reward behaviors that we want to see again. And we try really hard to stay away from having to do any sort of punishment um, for dogs because that leads to a lot of fallout in the form of frustration and fear and other things. 
And with reinforcement as a consequence, we get really happy dogs who want to work and want to keep training with us and who want to do the tasking. And we love sending out dogs um, summit dogs that look happy, you know, to be tasking for their future person. Um, so that's why we love using reinforcement. So how do we get the dogs to do what we want them to do? Well, as I said before, reinforcement and motivators totally matter. So we get to be creative, but we also have to be observant. So again, we, we get a dog in, um, it might be a new dog to me, and I might say, okay, I'm gonna play some toys with you, or I'm gonna give you some treats, or I'm gonna see if you get excited about praise, right? And I'm gonna observe how that dog reacts and responds to me when I have a toy, when I have, um, it, some treats or um, when I give it some praise, do they get excited or are they just like meh, right? So I want to find the thing that really gets them excited or happy. Um, and that's what I'm going to use to um, work with the dog to get the behaviors I want. So I look at what they look like, um, is the tail wagging? And luckily we use um, dogs like Labradors who generally are pretty darn food motivated. And in that case, they will work um, for food and that's their paycheck. So we reward the dog for doing a behavior we want um, and we, or we want to see them repeat it again. So, um, once we have the behavior, then we put it on cue. Some people might call it a command, but at Summit we call it a cue um, because we don't force our dog <laughs> to do anything. We just give them a cue. That cue tells them, hey, if you do this behavior, you will get a paycheck or we'll give you a praise for it too. So most of our cues are verbal, um, but we do use hand signals at times for some things too. And um, we cue a behavior when the dog um, does does it and then they get a reward so there we go okay and then the last thing is you'll hear me say the word yes quite a bit during our training session and that just tells the dog they they get a paycheck and their paychecks like a piece of treat <laughs> so um, to teach any dog can learn this. It's an excellent way to do uh, teach dogs really detailed behaviors like flipping on and off light switches, right? We need to be able to tell the dog we want you to flip the light on with your nose up or and or down. So that's kind of a more detailed behavior that needs really good communication with the dog. So to build that, we use either um, the cue yes, or we might use a clicker and that it's the same thing. We kind of use them interchangeably, but um, to teach the dog this communication, we say, yes, we give them a treat. It doesn't matter what the dog's doing in the very beginning when they're brand new, you just say, yes, give them a treat. Yes, give them a treat and repeat. Pretty soon, the dog really perks up and starts paying attention when they hear that Y-E-S. And I have two dogs in the back here. I'm glad they're staying on <laughs> their beds when they hear that because they um, know it's a training sound. But yes, let's the dog basically know that they've done the behavior that earns them the food reward. And uh, marking a behavior with one clear word or signal like the clicker allows humans to cl clearly communicate with another species, which is awesome. <laughs> so if you think about it, that we can clearly communicate with um, dogs like this so all right so let's get to some training here okie dokie so one of the behaviors i want to um kind of show you guys and start with is a not so flashy behavior but it's important in building lots of other behaviors so it's it can be used by the client to do things like it, the behaviors holding holding things in their mouth and um, it can be used by the client for the dog to hold items in their mouth um, like potentially up to the size of backpacks um, the behaviors hold for teaching, the behaviors used for teaching tug um, and some other things so that I'm going to show you here. So we need that behavior to build on to um, the retrieve as well. So I'm just going to work Hamon and Junie here um, and you, you get to see in real life how, how it kind of goes and how long I work a dog or I don't. 
and um, you'll see how hold is used in our various um, other behaviors and skills the dogs use for tasking for their future person. So I have Junie here. Okay. And the very first thing we do when we're training a hold is we use a dumbbell. And this one is wood. So um, we just first start by teaching them to put their mouth on it. And I have my um, treats over here at a little treat station. Yes. So Junie already knows this behavior, but I'm going to just kind of quickly show you the steps through it. Yes. So I'm marking and rewarding when she goes to put her mouth on the dumbbell. Yes. And then I'm going to start removing my hands from the dumbbell so that she's actively just holding the dumbbell with her mouth. Yes. Good girl. Hold. Yes. So there I inserted the cue. I'm going to do it again. Hold. Yes. Good girl. All right. All right. And then Hamon went, wants in on this. So we have to do a process called generalizing. Um, a, a client wouldn't use a dumb, dumbbell very frequently, I would think, um, but they, the dogs do need to learn to pick up a lot of different textures and objects in their mouth. So that would be everything from a piece of plastic. So I have like a piece of PVC pipe, and then I have a piece of cardboard um, kind of tube here. I have some uh, thing of string cheese. I'm going to see if uh, the dogs will hold that. I have a pen. So I just try to think of a whole bunch of different items that the dog might um, have to pick up in their life and make sure that the dog will touch, put metal in their mouth, put, put plastic in their mouth and all sorts of different things. Um, coins, um, keys are all, you know, different types of metal and tastes and textures. Come on, here. Good. Junie. Junie, Ed. Junie. Ed. Good girl. Come on, pretty. Come on. Good boy. So we're going to try Hamon with the cardboard. Hold. Yes. And then the plastic. Hold. Yes. And he seemed very comfortable. The whole time I'm kind of watching the dog, I'm making sure they're comfortable um, holding that object in their mouth. Because when I go to ask for something like a retrieval of the item, um, I, I generally like to see, make sure that before I ask for a retrieve of something off the ground that they're comfortable holding that item in their mouth to begin with because a dog can't do a retrieval if they're not already comfortable kind of having um, touched or experienced that uh, texture in their mouth. So here's a little metal uh, pen. I'm going to see how Hamon likes holding that. Hold. Good boy. So he was very still. He's not doing any chomping. And that's exactly what I like to see. Um, and he's not spitting it out. <laughs> that's a surefire way to see, um, tell if the dog does not like holding something. And, you know, if they do spit it out, that's just information for me to know that, oh, the dog didn't like that texture very much. And I might need to give them a higher value reward item. So I'm going to try maybe like my keys. First, um, I have this cloth part on it, so I'll, I'll see if he'll mind holding it. And there's some weight to this, so we'll see what he thinks of that. Get it. Hold. Yes, good boy. Good job, buddy. All right. Come on, bed. Good. Junie free. There you go. Okay, so Junie's up. I'm going to try my cell phone, so I must trust her. Cell phones are expensive. <laughs> Come on, bed. Good boy. Okay. Junie, hold. Yes. I'm going to turn around so you guys can see a little better. Good 
girl. All right. So that was quite a few things here. Oh, I'll try. Oh, do I dare try open string cheese? I don't know. <laughs> so this is a brand new thing. I thought this would be um, interesting to check out and see um, if the dogs, you know, how good their hold is. Will they eat the string cheese or um, have I reinforced them enough to not eat the string cheese? So hold. Yes. All right. Thank you for not eating the string cheese on live training session, Junie. <laughs> Okay, good girl. Um, all right, so that's the first step is seeing if a dog will hold. Junie, here, bed. Good. Okay, the next part is um, seeing now that we have a hold and are building that, the dog can start retrieving things off the ground. So let's see here. I just have random objects all over. We'll try a remote control. <laughs> Move out of the way. Make sure y'all can see. All right. Come on, get it. Junie. Thank you, Junie. You're very helpful. Junie, bed. Come on, freak. Get it. Hold. Yes. Good job. All right. You guys are getting all moved around. So I'm gonna I marked him. Good. Okay, good boy. And then let's see, we'll try. Um, doo -doo. Remote. Maybe we'll try keys. Sit. Good boy. Come on, get it. Hold. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Come on, bed. Good boy. All right, Junie. Junie wants a chance. Let's see here. So <laughs> we'll see what she thinks. Tape measure. Um, a lot of weird kind of balance to it. It's very heavy, so I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. I haven't done um, a tip measure yet, so to check it out with her, Jimmy. I'm just gonna let her feel it. Get it. Hold. Yes. Good girl. Order for it. Let's see if I can. Sit. Yes. Good job, Junie. Good. So that was great. Nice quick retrieve. All right. Okay. So another thing that hold is used for starting um, is tug. So tug is used to um, help the client open really heavy doors tugging off clothing um, and tugging. I have a laundry basket back here that I was going to see if they would tug that and kind of um, utilize that skill. So let's see, show you here. So if I was getting started with um, tugging, say my slipper, I might see again if Junie would hold this and put it in her mouth. Junie, get it. Hold. Good girl. Okay. And then the other thing is, I want to see if she'll tug it with the cute tug. Tug. Yes. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to combine those two behaviors and I'm going to make it a little more resistant here, but not too much to start her off. Junie, get it? Tug. Yes. Good. 
good. Very good. Get it. Yes. Nice job. Very good. Very good. Okay. And then let's see here. Oh, I was going to show you Hamon and see if he will try with our last thing. Time goes so fast. If we can combine um, holding something in his mouth while he's tugging too. I'm on free. I'm sure y'all can see. So I have a tug tug rope on here already. Yes. Good boy. So he's combining the behavior of holding something in his mouth um, and the behavior of tugging, which is just pulling something back. Tug. Give. Yes. Good boy. And then. It looks like he's very comfortable with this and it's a pretty new behavior for him, new in that he's only done that uh, one session of that. So I'm gonna just try adding a little bit of weight here. Maybe some towels. And seeing how he responds to um, a little resistance. Great, good, let's go. Yes, good boy, good boy. So there he, um, it was good information for me because he midway stopped, released it, um, but then went on to tugging. So that told me he just wasn't used to as much um, weight in the basket. So there we go. Emma, how are we doing? Good. Do we have questions? We have one question. Um... Someone asked, what do you do if the dog doesn't let go after you ask uh, him or her to hold? So, oh, it doesn't let, let go of like the object? I think so, yeah. Okay, so in um, while we're training hold, we're also training a cue drop. And I would say if the dog is having trouble dropping something, then um, I would start reinforcing drop more because the hold is very reinforcing to the dog, meaning the dog really likes holding something, but not dropping it. Or they just haven't learned how to drop or the cue to drop yet. So that behavior of dropping something would just need to be rewarded more frequently or actively taught. Nice. Um, okay, we don't have any other questions yet. Um, so if you do have some questions, um, you can ask them in the Q&A or the chat works as well. Um, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to show or talk about while we see if people have some more questions? Yeah, I mean, I can continue on for as long as the dogs, these guys are really rare into work. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to, to do a little bit more. I have a tug set up over here, but I'll have to transfer, see if you guys can, let's see here, see my door tug so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Maybe, woo, you guys are all going for a ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, come on, come on, tug. Yes, okay. So Hamon is learning to tug open the door and now I'm gonna work through the process of seeing if he'll tug it and then hold it open because this is a pretty light door to start with but eventually we want the dog to hold it open while um, their person is able to go through the door um, or at least block the door long enough for them to um, hold the door themselves. So let's try adding hold. Tug. And he's learning to get how to grip it appropriately. Hold. Can you drop it? Here we go. Tug. Hold. Yes. Good boy. Tug. Hold. Yes. Good. Good boy. 
boy. Question? Yes, we have a couple questions now. Um, what boy. do you do if a dog doesn't love food rewards? <laughs> If they don't love food rewards, then you can use something else. Again, the dog tells us because that's, yeah, um, that's sometimes the case. So you could use like toy, um, praise, play, playing with each other. Some dogs love petting um, and or interaction with the human. So it's all about getting to know your personal dog in general and seeing what they like. That's the observant part of being a trainer. And guess what? If you own a dog, you are a trainer. You're teaching that dog um, all sorts of things, whether you know it or not, or like it or not. Um, so yeah, get to know your dog and get to know what they kind of like to do. Whether it be play or tug or whatever, you can use tug and play as rewards for sure. Sit, and then if they do it, good dog, start playing with them. What? do you find is one of the most challenging behaviors to teach that summit clients might require for their dogs loose leash walking <laughs> hands down so that takes about two years to fully train it oh hold on <laughs> and waiting and having the dog learn to wait their turn while another dog gets um, worked with. <laughs> That's also challenging. But loose leash walking can be really, really hard. And it takes a full, ever um, from the time a puppy raiser has the dog up until the dog is placed, it's teaching the dog to walk with a loose leash. Um, that is a really consistent behavior that needs um, constant um, reinforcement in the beginning, especially um, those of you who have are raising puppies for us, you know, you got to reinforce, reinforce that behavior for walking um, nicely beside you without pulling on the lead because dogs walk at a much faster pace than us or want to. There's a thousand other more interesting things they'd rather be doing on walks than walking perfectly beside us, right? Um, so anyways, I find that to be Kind of one of the more challenging behaviors that is ongoing um, up until placement so and even after placement so we have a couple questions that are curious about the dropping uh, cue or behavior um so someone's wondering just kind of like how would you go about training drop and then uh with that like how do you get the dog to drop something that it likes um, well, if it's something they really have um, a good grip on, sometimes you can just do a food scatter. So I'll have uh, like some, some kibble or something or whatever, or you could get another toy. And if your dog's more toy motivated and you kind of, if <laughs> I know dogs like to play keep away. So I'm kind of imagining maybe a scenario I've had before where the dog has something it's maybe a dangerous thing or something you don't want them to, you know, have in their mouth or whatever. I might pick up another reinforcing thing or do a treat scatter. I'd say drop, scatter my food, and they learn pretty quickly um, that oh, drop. <laughs> if I drop this thing out of my mouth, I get a I I get a nice food reward or another toy um, in return. So that's just one of many many ways. But I'm imagining for pet dog world. In service dog world, I go back to using that dumbbell again, and I might have one little kibble in my hand. So if I have that hold behavior and I want to teach the dog to drop it, um, I'll have them hold and then I'll say drop. I'll present my treat and usually they'll open their mouth to get the treat. And right when they open their mouth, that's when I'm marking yes and then delivering the treat. So I'm kind of using the treat as a an incentive to, for them to open their mouth. So, and then I start, keep building on that behavior. So uh, eventually when it use a treat, right, I would, I would what we call fade that out, fade the treat out and just kind of wait for the dog. Um, I might repeat like with a treat three times, show them the treat. And then as they're dropping it, I might just say drop, wait three seconds. And usually the dog will start to anticipate, oh, that's the word that means spit it out. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I go about doing that kind of more formally um, than I would maybe with a pet dog. That's really you can do it with a pet dog too. 
Um, so is, are the dogs taught to open a door inward as well as what you demoed? Um, yep. So definitely we want to teach the dogs all sorts of different ways because some clients you will use a dog like in a bathroom sort of situation um, at their home or whatever, maybe they want the dog to close the door for them, but their bathroom's too small for the dog to actually fit in the bathroom for them. So in that case, the dog would pull the door closed with the person behind it. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways. We definitely want the dogs to learn to open and um, close um, or open and tug open doors. Sometimes when the hardest, um, some of the harder ones are when the door's all the way open, the dog, we try to teach them not to swing their um, bottom inside the room. Instead, we want them to come straight in, grab the tug and pull straight back. Um, so that can be challenging when they want to put, put their full body inside of the room. But to answer the question, all different sorts of ways that you can imagine, that's what we try to train for as far as tugging goes. Cause it can be, we never know what, what the person might encounter in the future. So we try to generalize a bunch of different ways as, as much as possible um, for teaching the dog to tug. So that goes for cabinets too, low cabinets um, and drawers and doors and um, tugging like baskets and stuff and clothes. Yep. So how long does training typically take before a dog is placed? And then how soon will Hamon and Juniper be ready to be paired? So training, we have several different stages of training. It starts all the way from the beginning when the dogs are with their, the, our volunteer puppy raisers, they're training the dogs um, and starting them off. They're doing a lot of socialization with them as well. And then they might go into, some of them go into our prison program where they do more um, obedience type of training. And then um, that's usually, I don't know, a little bit of a year, a little bit um, older. And then when they're, they come out, we call it advanced training. And that's when they're starting to learn more of their tasking skills and whatever. Um, <laughs> so it would, it takes usually about two years um, of a dog's life to get into placement after they've passed all their testing and everything um, too. So about two full years. And then these guys are about two. So they will be graduating very soon <laughs> if everything continues to go well. All right, and then we have one more question. Um, when do you stop treating and marking behavior? Yep. So great question. So um, behaviors like sit that have been reinforced for a really long time don't require a treat after every single one, right? So the more a behavior has what's called reinforcement history behind it, meaning that that behavior has been reinforced a lot. Um, and the dog is really happy doing that behavior and really um, good and reliable about doing that behavior, then we start fading out the food. And we also um, expect too, that some of our clients be able to reinforce the dog and we help them learn how to do that. And um, so food becomes, it comes into like, we call it variable reinforcement. So some behaviors get rewarded, some behaviors don't. And then also some behaviors, dogs just like doing. So some of the cues, like for instance, Junie likes doing a roll behavior where she rolls on her back. So that cue and that behavior can actually be used to reward another behavior. Um, so that helps us not be, have to use food every single time. Um, and then in their training, we also just start, um, doing, using less and less food to get them used to it too. So over the course of like advanced training, um, they do get used to not getting a food reward for every single behavior. And then when it comes time to, for, uh, team training, we do have uh, the pair, the match and the client. Uh, they, we do have them reinforce behaviors quite frequently when they're first learning them with the dog. And that's for the client um, and for the dog's sake. So the client uh, gets to know how to use the cue and rewards the dog for doing that cue. Um, but pretty quickly the dog can pick up that, that uh, 
queue with the new person and uh, start using it. And yeah, some of these behaviors like tug is another behavior that dogs, once they learn <laughs> kind of what it is and how to use it, um, they usually enjoy doing it. Some dogs do anyways. So, and same with retrievals. Sometimes they find retrieving things is just a lot of fun. So those aren't things you necessarily have to reward every single time. Just every now and then behaviors do have to be maintained through reinforcement, so. Well, awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, Lindy. And thank you, Mona and Jennifer, for demonstrating. <laughs> They're laying on my lap. <laughs> oh, <what is? laughs> oh, and thank you, everyone, for attending this event. Um, and again, thank you to our sponsor, Pacific Source Health Plan. Our next Unleash Your Love virtual giving event, um, special virtual event like this, is going to be April 29th at 5.30 p.m. And it's going to be a tour of our future training campus where our canine condo building um, is getting pretty far in its construction. So you'll get an inside look at, um, at that project and what the rest of the campus is going to look like when it's complete. So um, feel free to visit our Unleash Your Love campaign page. Uh, the link is in the chat. And um, at that page, you can uh, learn more about Summit, you can donate, you can watch some of, uh, learn more, see more Summit stories and learn more about the upcoming events. Um, we also have our finale program on um, May 6th, which is Thursday at 6 p.m. And that will include um, more information about the journey of a Summit dog and then stories from our clients and um, uh, you'll get to hear from a few other Summit staff and uh, board members as well. So thanks again for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of your week and the sunny weather if you are in Western Washington. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Lindy. Thanks everybody. Yay, Simone says bye. <laughs> <laughs>